Chip, where are you? Chip McCallahan slowly opened his eyes, put on his spectacles, and made his way toward the front door, coughing as he went. His hair was white, and he walked with a limp. But this was only because he'd just fallen off the kitchen table and upset a can of flour over himself while trying to reach the jar of cookies on the top shelf. That was pretty much all the excitement he'd had that week, even though he still had a lot of fun at the parties that some of the Bitbusters organized every once in a while, he missed the exciting days of exploring the two clubhouses that Melinda and the Bitbusters had built. Good heavens, Chip, Melinda exclaimed as he opened the door. Look at you. I'm not letting you into the new clubhouse like that. Chip's jaw dropped. New? New clubhouse? Did you say new clubhouse? Yes, I did, said Melinda. You better get ready if you're up for the challenge. Boy, am I ever, Chip declared, starting to dust himself. By the way, Melinda continued, the clubhouse also has an exclusive Bitbusters lounge where you can drop in between levels. I'll be there too, keeping an eye on your progress. Soon, Chip found himself at the doors of the third clubhouse in his illustrious career. Would he be able to solve all of its puzzles? What's up, everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Chip's Challenge Level Pack 3. I'm JB, and I am super excited for this Let's Play because I feel like I have a bit more of a connection to this official set than I ever did with CCLP2, aside from the nostalgia factor. This set, I, as I mentioned during the CCLP2 Let's Play, I was responsible for the production of and uh, assembly of it, and it was so much fun to do. Now, there are certainly some flaws and some regrets I have while building it, but overall, I think it's a good set, and I really do enjoy it a lot. So I'm going to go ahead and just get started playing it here. This first level is called Entrance Examination. And it was actually the winner of a contest that um, the CCLP3 staff held to determine what the first level of the set would be. And this level won. Uh, it was actually a pretty close race from what I remember. And also, the little story portion that I just read there before this all started, that is actually a story that was written by our... Uh, um, very own Madhav Shanbog, who uh, was quite a prominent part of the staff during the set's assembly. And I think he did a very good job with the story, personally. So I'm going to be reading these story portions while we go through the game. It's going to be a little bit different um, than the way I was hoping it would be, just because when the set was released, there was a version of Tile World that was also released. Um, that allowed for these story bits to exist, essentially. And you can read them in the game and, you know, just stuff like that. Personally, I think that's really cool. Like, I like that idea. The bad news, though, is that um, I couldn't really record this in that version of Tile World because it's only a Windows thing, which is kind of a bummer. And when I tried to record it in Windows, you know, like I did with CCLP or CC2, Unfortunately, Tile World 2, as it's called, didn't exactly uh, survive the recording process. It actually crashed in the middle of a recording. So to avoid doing that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be reading the story portions and pasting them into the description for each video that actually has one. These aren't exactly going to be very pervasive or anything, so you don't have to worry about that. But I thought it'd be fun you know, to do stuff like this, for this Let's Play at least. You also notice, by the way, that I've got um, a TWS file with scores already filled in here. This is my main score file. You can see my current total score right here. Uh, I'm currently in second place in CCLP uh, 3 among all people who've completed it. And I'm hoping to reclaim first place because Pi Guy stole it from me. So we'll have to see how that goes. Anyway, um, the other downside to not using Tile World 2 is that we also cannot see in the game who designed each of the levels. So I'm going to be mentioning uh, the designers as we go along like I did with CCLP2. So the designer of the first level was Tyler Sontag. Uh, I think that level was actually the first level of the set he submitted if I remember correctly. A TCCLP I think was the name of it. Um, I want to say that was what it was called back then because he eventually came out with a set called TS1 and then he made TS0 and now TS2. So, yeah, his, his set anthology is a little confusing, but uh, that was, I believe, the first level of the set. And honestly, the philosophy that we had as a staff for that, I'm not exactly sure I agree with it. Like, the idea was that we wanted to build 
a uh, first level that accomplished or like reintroduced players to the game again. Personally, I feel like you have to escalate the difficulty curve a little more gently than that. I I think first levels should be like stuff that's too hard for something like CC1 or CCLP1, but do a very good job of introducing players to the game. Anyway, uh, this level was made by Firefly. That's the only name we know this person by, and it's the only level they have in the set as well. Anyway, moving on to a walk in the park. This is a level made by Tom Patton, or Tom P, as he's uh, sometimes called. He is the administ or he was the administrator, I should say, of CC Zone, which is the main Chips Challenge forum these days. Since the news group is now down, sadly. Uh, but yeah, I. I personally think that for the beginning of a set, like a level like this, if you're going to go with a campaign level, may have been a better idea because this is a little more straightforward than review was with the hot block and with all that. This is a little reminder of how teleports work. But maybe after a few of those kind of levels, then maybe you can have a pretty lengthy level like review. Kind of like nuts and bolts except on a harder scale, if that makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Yeah, I'm hoping that will be what will be done with CCLP4, personally, just because we haven't had a set that's quite like that. Like, I think I mentioned this during the CCLP2 Let's Play, but that set had like a really strange introduction with a bunch of random levels in the beginning. And then CCLP3 had a level 1, but then just kind of launched into everything else without really establishing much of a difficulty curve. And then CCLP1 just tried to accomplish what the original game accomplished with its tutorials and stuff because that's what it was built to be. So I'm really hoping CCLB4 will be like an advanced introduction kind of thing. We'll see how that goes and what the CCLB4 staff decides. Because uh, I'm going to, I've been serving as kind of an advisor to the staff, but I'm not really going to be on it like when voting starts and all that good stuff. So anyway, that's a walk in the park done. I really like that level, by the way. And now on to Suction Solution. This is a level by Mike Lask, who you may remember from uh, CCLP2. And you may also recall that I mentioned during that Let's Play that a lot of designers just went bonkers on building levels after that set was released and CCLP3 was, gonna, was announced as a thing. And Mike was one of these designers. He built a very extensive set called Mike L2. And this level set was a big, big hit among optimizers. Like, it was a big deal. I spent a lot of time optimizing the levels in that set. It was a lot of fun to do. Um, there is at least one level that I know I don't have the optimal time on just because it is in this set and it's an unconfirmed bold that I don't have right now. So I'll tell you more about that when we get there. And there's also a few levels that he recently added to the set that I haven't built, but at any rate, it is a really fun, fun, fun level set. So right now, most of this level is just like a bunch of block looping, but it's a very effective, see this is what I mean, this is a great example of an introductory level. It's a level that teaches you something about a mechanic in the game. Uh, in this case, it's about block pushing. I mean, the suction part of it is pretty much only the beginning part. And then the block pushing takes up most of the rest of the time. Um, but I like that, though. Like It's a very nice little compressed level, and it's pretty simple at that. There's a few levels here at this beginning like section that just really do a good job. This is one of them. I can think of two other ones, and I'll point those out when we get there. Anyway, we have only one ship left, and you don't want to come here until you have only one ship left because of the path here you have to take back, which involves going through sockets. And there we go. Suction solution is done. Yeah, you'll notice I'm not being very optimal, and I'm not really trying to get super great times here with this. And that's especially going to be the case for this level. Toggle Bust. This is an interesting level, because mainly it has an interesting story behind it. Um, this level was designed by a designer named Blake Ebert, and this is probably going to be the only time I mention him in the Let's Play, because this is the only level he has in the set, and this was actually something that came about as a result of something that happened toward the end of CCLP3 voting, and that is the wildcard round. So, one of the things that we had noticed during voting, just looking at the data and everything, 
was, the, and I think this may actually be the path that leads forward. If I'm, yeah, it is. Okay, let me go back. I need to take the dead end path first. One of the things we had noticed when we were looking through the, the voting data for this set was that there were a very clearly there was a very clearly defined list of winners, so to speak, um, that made it into the set. And this was about maybe 117 levels, if I remember correctly. And there was a bunch of levels below that that extended past the 149 cutoff mark. And we were like, well, you know, we want to make sure that we get the right levels from that bunch into the set. So why don't we have a round that's pretty much just dedicated to making sure that we clarify what the community thinks of those levels. And essentially just run, kind of like a runoff kind of thing, where we just evaluate those levels by themselves. And did I miss a, hang on a sec. I did miss a path, it was this one. This is the one I meant to go to first. Um, so anyway, we had this this runoff vote, this wild card vote. And interestingly enough, it's, it was interesting to see just how the community's rating kind of tendencies changed just because there was a much more limited set of levels. So it helped because it kind of narrowed the scale of quality that people had in mind when they gave ratings to levels. And that was really nice to see. So we were able to get some good clarifications on some. But beyond the ones that, you know, we were kind of hoping for, and by hoping for, I mean we were hoping to see, not specific levels, but hoping to see some good results on, like, okay, so this is clearly standing out above this other level, that kind of thing. Um, we found that there were some levels that were still kind of down there, and we didn't really quite know what to do with those. So what we did in the end was that we decided we were going to have kind of a, we called it like mercy inclusion policy in which we would take levels by designers who didn't who wouldn't have had anything in the set otherwise and in this case Blake was one of those designers and I don't know why I had to hit that again um, and we would include those levels just because they did fairly well in the wild card round so in the end it ended up being pretty good just because I think some of these levels added some variety to the set this personally is not my favorite one but it is very interesting to optimize and I do recall it was one of the levels that was quite uh, heavily optimized when its set was released on Pi Guy's site shortly after that was up on the internet, uh, and a lot of optimizers were optimizing custom levels there. I miss that. You know, there aren't a lot of people who do that these days, and I wish more people did it. Um, I'm, this is probably not going to be the only time I say that, but I really wish more people optimized custom levels. So, yeah, it's... That was one of the voting stories that I have. I'll definitely be telling more here as we go on. But I thought it was really cool we got to include some levels like this. And I think this is a pretty clear dead end, or maybe it's a longer path, but we're getting close to the end anyway, and they're, both of these paths are going to be major dead ends. But then we can just blast through all the, or excuse me, bust through all the sockets after we're done with this part. This level, by the way, is really crazy to optimize in links, and that's mainly just because it's um, you can easily lose a lot more time than you may think at first in links. So yeah. Anyway, thieves and teleports. Now this is another great example of an introductory level. This introduces people to partial posting. This level was made by Joshua Bone, whom some of you may recognize as one of the designers from CC2. Well, it turns out he designed some CC1 content as well, and this is probably the set that's um, replete with the most levels by him, which is pretty awesome. It basically teaches you about block pushing, partial posting, and some thievery as well, which is pretty neat. Very, very simple and fun. And that's pretty much it. Thieves and teleports complete. Dancing gliders. This level was, in case you couldn't tell by the gliders on the ice and that kind of uh, spacing there, this level was made by Rolf Redford. Um, this kind of looks like the stuff from Glider and Fire. I really like this level, though. I think it's kind of fun. Um, 
I want to say this is also the only level that he got in the set, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to see, though. Anyway, um, there are bugs, and there's a bug in a paramecium behind those um, dirt paths. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and just collect all the stuff. This part reminds me of Danger of Fire and Beast from CCLP2, which he also designed. This one has the bug, so he'll conveniently go into this path here. And this will enable us to get to the exit, which is pretty awesome. So we have a little chase race here. Then we go down here and get this guy. Alright, we made it through, not a scratch. Pigeonhold. This level was created by Scott Feeney, who some of you might recall was a designer in CC2 of a few levels. And this is a really fun level. I like the design of it a lot. I think it's really clever. There's a off-screen monster that clones a block there. <coughs> Excuse me. But it's really, really fun. And really, really short. And then we have this level, Redoubled Efforts. This is another Joshua Bone level, and honestly, one of my favorites in the entire set. Um, it's just a very well-constructed level with a lot of little challenges that just fit together well. And a really, really neat monster manipulation um, bit that doesn't really require much thinking. Which is really neat just to see something just work, like a Rube Goldberg machine like that. I really, I really appreciate that a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to clone this fireball. He's going to press the toggle button for us, which will enable us to travel through that path from this, uh, I'm calling it the Amsterdam room, after the level from CC1. And then the fireball is going to go through that teleport, and he will end up in here, um, which is interesting. Or, excuse me, not through the teleport. Um, wait, was it through the teleport? I forget. I forget the fireball's path now, but at any rate, we're about to make it go through a teleport now. I think this is what I was thinking of, with a tank button there. And so now, we got the bold time! Alright, redoubled effort complete. Um, I actually set the record for that level in MS, so I'm kind of proud of that. Annoying wall. This level teaches you about block sliding. And it's a pretty nice short level. It also is rather infamous for being a pretty tough bold to figure out. There's actually a few different methods you can use to get the bold, but it's really, really tough to negotiate if you don't know what you're doing. And finally we get, I guess I don't have to push this all the way up there. I could have done this from the bottom, but I don't care, I don't care. And that was created by Wes Powers, who has a few levels in the set, so be sure to watch out for his content. This is Blue Blocks. This is a, this is a really interesting aesthetic level by uh, Jacques Smith, that was the name of the designer. Um, and you do have to go press the block, at the, or push the block, block at the beginning to the left, um, just because if you go to the right, then you won't be able to do everything in this order with all the blocks, and you do need to do things in this order, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken, but I don't think you're allowed to go the other way. Pretty sure you're not. Okay, so we can go to the right from here. I don't think there's any other place to... Oh, wait a minute. No, there is. There certainly is. Let's go down this way. Let us go down this way. This is kind of dangerous, but thankfully all of those are fake. Which is nice. I appreciate that. Is there anything up here? Nope. Okay. So we get into another island area. I really like this aesthetic with all the rivers, rivers there and stuff. Like, that's really neat. I really like that. It's also really interesting that this level features rooms like this where everything is just kind of constrained. But then you get into some rooms that are not like that. Like there are some rooms that are way more open. Like this one, for instance. And that's really neat. Like I like when mazes can subvert your expectations like that. I should, probably should have checked that first. But 
Thankfully, this level is pretty loose uh, about a lot of stuff, including that. All right, I need to find where to go here. Okay, it's looking like up there is our destination. So yeah, Jacques was yet another uh, designer who got um, a level in the set. Wait a minute. Something feels wrong about that, but maybe that, that all that has is a chip under. Yeah, all that has is a chip. So yeah, Jock is another uh, mercy inclusion because he wouldn't have had any levels in the set otherwise. And this level performed pretty well in the um, the um, I keep wanting to call it the runoff voting, the uh, wild card voting. So that's really neat. We don't really have a lot of blue wall mazes in the set, so this was kind of a breath of fresh air, I think. One of the themes that you're going to notice quite a bit of throughout the course of this Let's Play is that a lot of these levels, particularly the ones um, I designed, have a lot of um, like little tiny challenges, and a lot of themes are repeated, like cloners' mazes, quote unquote, became a big fad after CCLB2 w was released. And I'm probably the most guilty out of any designer for including that many cloners' mazes in a set. I feel like I missed a chip back here, but... Yeah, that one. Did I really just forget to get it when I was way back there? Ah, that's really annoying. See, kids, this is why you need to be super thorough when you're pushing around with blue walls here. In case something like this happens. Aw, we couldn't take a shortcut. Oh well. Was there even a chip underneath that block? I don't think there was. Huh. Interesting. But yeah, there's a lot of cloners mazes, a lot of monster manipulation that you're going to see in this set, so... Be on the lookout for that, because it's going to be repeated a lot. That's what I, um, that's one of the things that I'm just not really the biggest fan of with this set, is that there really wasn't a lot of variety, and that's partially our fault as the staff, because I was kind of making a lot of excuses for that when we were building the set. I was like, you know, even though these, co these two levels have the same concept, and you'll see levels that are very similar conceptually, I was like, even though these levels have the same concept, you know, at least they're pretty different about how they go about that concept, and that was very bad. But I think we can get back without any problems, so I'm going to backtrack all the way through the whole thing. Oh, man, the silly things we do. So, yeah, I totally regret that now, just because now that CCLP1 has been released and CCLP4 is about to be a thing... I can now see that there's a lot of really cool ideas that should have been represented in a set, not just the ones that, you know, are the most optimizable or are the most, you know, interesting looking or, you know, just stuff like that. Thankfully, this is not, you know, too bad in this set. You know, I, I, I think it could have been worse, but it's definitely something I wish I could have taken, you know, gone back on and just changed a little bit. All right, so that's it for blue blocks. Uh, on to my friend. This is another favorite of mine in the set. It's another Joshua Bone level. And a really neat idea. You have to just use um, the T's to hit these buttons and then go to the uh, trap that's on the same row or column as the button. Which is a really cool idea. I really like it a lot. This is another... This is one level that's... Um, has a faster solution in Lynx than it does in Microsoft just because of the uh, presence of trap sliding where you basically traps are treated like ice which is pretty neat. My friend done. Roadblock! This is the first level in the set by Pi Guy. Uh, I've mentioned him a lot during my Let's Plays mainly just because he is a master at optimization and he puts a lot of my scores to shame. And this is a classic example of a level that's very simple to beat, but optimizing it is a pain because you can do all kinds of things with the force floors and with slide delay and I think with the mouse even. I forget if the mouse was involved with the bold routes, but it's a really complex level to optimize. 
but a fun one though. It's levels like this I find really fascinating, where the kind of the vanilla solution, if you want to call it that, is simple, but getting the fastest time is a challenge. And yet, it's not even that long of a level either, which is something that I really appreciate. So yeah, roadblock, fun level. Oh wait, I need to actually press it down like that. And now there's some slide delay included, so... There we go, roadblock complete. Onward to window shopping. So this level has a funny story behind it. It was created by Ida Robertson, one of my favorite authors in this set. And it was called Memory 2. Uh, we need the yellow key, by the way, along with another block. Um, there was a level that she created called Memory in the set she submitted called Ida3.dat. But um, kind of our policy when it came to naming levels was that we didn't really want to have any... If there was something that referenced the name of a level from the original game, or CCLP2, we didn't really want that sequel name to be included unless it was... Uh, let's see, I want to say that the skates and the fire boots are all we need. Um... We didn't really want that name to be included unless the successor, quote-unquote, actually had some sort of resemblance to the original. And in this case, this really isn't anything like Memory from CC1. So we didn't really want to call it Memory 2. So I came up with this name called Window Shopping because I felt like we were shopping for boots and keys. Well, the community saw the name and they thought that window shopping was a, like a term that was used to talk about looking at another area from the room in which you're currently standing. But it really wasn't meant to be that. Um, that was actually not the intention. So sorry to disappoint anyone who thought that that was the definition of window shopping. Anyway, this level was also created by Ida. It's called Bumper. And you can kind of see the, uh, the gimmick here. Really, really fun idea, by the way. Have we had a death in this Let's Play yet? I don't think we have. So you just have to bridge to these keys here and then go to the exit. Well, and then bridge the exit, I guess. So yeah, you have to be very, very quick on your feet here when... Uh, dodging the blocks and stuff, but... The nice thing is that you can see which blocks are still there just from sliding around and all that. So that's pretty cool. I'm trying to be slightly but not too careful with this Let's Play just because I don't want to take too much time, but I also don't want to... Um, I don't want to be careless either. Alright, bumper done. Two sets of rules. There is a story portion of this level. I'm going to open up my browser to the uh, portion of the game that has this, so I can read it. Two sets of rules. I'm done with 15 levels already, Chip announced as he entered the Bitbusters lounge excitedly. This is easy. Well, that's because the first few levels were made for you to remember the rules of the game, Melinda told him. Ha! said Chip, as if I would ever forget the rules. Really? Did you even know that there are actually two sets of rules? Melinda inquired. Huh? What? Different rules for the same puzzle? How is that possible? Chip asked. And how do I decide which ones to use? Well, the Bitbusters have seen to it that you'll be able to solve the levels in either case, Melinda replied. Haven't you seen the two doors at the entrance of the clubhouse? There's one with an L on it and one with an M. The door you enter through decides how you'll experience the levels. Which one did you choose? Uh... The one near the ice cream stand, Chip answered sheepishly. Well, after you play the next level, try it again going through the other door, said Melinda. You just might be in for a few surprises. So yeah, this level is a level that kind of explains in pretty cool detail some of the differences between Microsoft and Lynx. So what I'm doing here wouldn't be possible in Lynx, like boosting backwards there. Like, that block there actually has a bomb underneath it, but you could totally do that um, through, um, what's that called? Um, block sl uh, slapping. Couldn't remember the name of that. Like, that right there, that walker would have erased that key because you erase blue keys and links. I'm not really going to go through all these, but uh, and that's cross-checking, which is not possible in links, and so on and so forth. 
So, pretty cool concept. And this one you can boost backwards on force floors and stuff. This one, in Lynx, you would have died because you would have slid through the trap. And that one, the, the bug would have died and you could have gotten that ship in Lynx. Then up here, there is a little uh, difference with what gets blown up first. In this case, it's the left side for MS, the right side for Lynx. And I want to say this is the right way. There we go. There is a little bit of guesswork there, but it's not too bad. So that's two sets of rules. Now this level, that was made by Mike Lask, by the way. Now this level is a lot of fun. Uh, optimizing it was a pain, but the solution, the optimal solution was a lot of fun. Um, it's basically a blow up bombs with this glider cloner thing, but just watch this. I'm gonna play back the solution. I, I normally won't do this, but I figured it was worth doing for this level. The way this works out is just so fun. So there are 10 bombs in that column. There are th four in the first, third, and fourth columns, and I think 11 in the last one. Yeah, just watch how neatly that just all works out. Isn't that awesome? Oh my goodness, I love this level. I hated optimizing it, but I love this level. I do appreciate how neatly that worked. Anyway, on to replay. This is another Mike last level. It was originally titled Going for Bold, and the idea behind this is that you want to pick, There's you, there are four chips that you can, um, wait, it's this way. There are four chips that you need to collect, but there's like eight or seven chips that you could collect, and you have to decide which ones are the fastest ones to get, which is a really neat idea. There have been quite a few levels I've used this concept since this level was made, but this is still one of the most definitive ones, I think. So this is one of the longer paths, but it's one of the less riskier paths, so I'm going to totally take this with no regrets. Okay, I'm going to take this icy one. Oops. This way is the right way. Uh, that way is not, but this way is... And there we go. And now I'm going to go from through there, and that's going to clone a bunch of fireballs. However, we can disrupt the fireball. Well, I thought we could disrupt the fireballs. Okay, there we go. I'm hoping that this chip is still possible to get. This looks really, really dangerous. Yeah, I don't think I did that very well, so let's not go for that then. That's a tough one in MS. Uh, however, we do have this over here. I'm just going to do this one because this is not very risky. I'm trying to be wise about what risks I go for. There's also a busted but longer solution in which you could take a block from this room all the way up to the boot room and just get the flippers from there, which is pretty cool. And now we can go here. The lower left room would have been a monster manipulation room, which could have been fun, but I decided to go this way. So there's this teeth, and you just have to outsmart him. That's pretty much it. There's no actual monster manipulation with the teeth. And we're done. Replay complete. Moving on to Super Chip. See if this looks familiar to you. That's right, this is a uh, basically a Chips Challenge port of Super Mario Brothers Level 1. Which is so awesome as a concept. Like, I love this. This was made by Ida Robertson, and it is such a neat idea. So you go down to the pipe, and you go underground here. Then we have only one ship left. So then we go up through the ground. And then we go this way. So I guess now we've had a death in the Let's Play. In case we didn't already have it. And castle. But Pr Princess Melinda is in another castle. That's sad. Anyway, moving on to rock. 
This level was made by somebody, I believe, named James Spriggs. Um, I don't understand the title, personally. Uh, but it is a cool level. And now that's just going to go crazy. I'm not sure what trap that controls, but apparently it's that one. That's kind of a little mean, but, you know, understandable. We'll let that one go into that bomb. Get some chips here out of this whole mess. And we can switch the toggles to get a block. We also have another block over here. And we would need to keep the toggles in their current state to get to the exit, but I do believe there are two sets of toggles, so we can just go through and do it this way. Like such. There we go. And then use this set to move them back, and then grab the keys, and we should be good to exit. So that is the first 20 levels of CCLP3 complete. And next time, we're going to move on to Mud and Water. So thank you all so much for watching. So far, this is off to a really fun start. If you enjoyed the video today, be sure to hit that like button, and I will catch you on the flip side. So take care, and I will see you next time.